Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I was up here alone, um, but there's something that God has placed on my heart to share what he has been teaching me in the past five, five and certain weeks, five months and certain weeks of this year, what God has been teaching me this year. Um, it has been very heavy on my heart and I know that it's going to help a number of people. All right, before we get into it, if you are new here, please subscribe, stay, join the Sunshine family. And if you are returning, thank you. Thank you. It is so appreciated. Um, like this video, go back and even like the previous videos. It really goes a long way for us creators when you do that. So yeah, let's get into it. So my word for this year is unstoppable. And when I got that word, I got that word in September of 2023. At first, I thought that it was the name of something that I was planning to come up with, which is now Bloom. And I think you have seen that Bloom happened in March. And I hope to have other events like that later on in the year. So when I got the word unstoppable, I thought it was the word for that. I thought Bloom would be unstoppable until God showed me that unstoppable was my word for the year. So I thought, hmm, I'm going to succeed. I'm going to grow bigger in business, in my work. And then about six weeks in, because my birthday is in Feb, Feb 13th, I, God gave me the word humility. He put the word humility on my heart. And I was like, hmm, why humility? I'm already humble. So slowly this year, God has been teaching me so many things on humility. Like you think that being humble is being quiet or saying your magic words, please, thank you, um, sorry, and the rest. But God was showing me that humility is a posture of my heart. And he showed me different places where um, there was comparison, where there was unforgiveness, where there was pain that I had held on to, and it was darkening my heart. And yeah, so I've been on that journey, having tough conversations with my friends, um, just so that our relationships, our friendship is more valuable. Our friendship is more authentic. And you know, when, when you hear me say it now, it sounds like it's it's easy, and but it involves a lot of tears, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of very difficult conversations. And so I want to share this for anyone who, you might think that you're humble, but I want, I want to encourage us to, to search our hearts, like truly search our hearts. Uh, in Psalms, David wrote and said, search my heart, O God, and show me if there's any unclean thing. Like search your heart and see if there's any unclean thing in your heart that might be stopping you from living truly as a child of God. And we may think that we are humble, we are all these things, we are patient, but then God, God gives us different scenarios and different tests and puts us in different rooms to test those things and show you that, mm, here you need to work on this, mm, here you need to change this, yeah? So even when we pray to be more patient, let's not expect that patience will just fall from heaven, yeah? Patience is a virtue. Patience is something that is worked like a muscle. It's something that is worked same as humility. So that's something that God has been teaching me. Humility, to be humble. Humble before God. Humble before people. Humble before even people that in our human nature we feel do not deserve that kind of humility. Yeah. And the other thing, of course, God has been teaching me is forgiveness. And I'm also learning that for me to forgive someone they don't have to apologize. Like, I don't have to have a conversation. I don't have to to hear, the, to see their remorse for me to forgive. Forgiveness is more for me than it is for the other person. So I am learning to forgive because when our hearts are burdened, then there are so many things that it's like, say, God forbid my hand got burnt by hot water. 
and now it has formed scar tissue there are things that my hand will not be able to do like my skin will not be like this maybe i might not be able to fold my hands until maybe i've had my fingers until i've had surgery so that's how unforgiveness mars our hearts your heart becomes like a heart of stone so may god remove those hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh because it's hearts of flesh that feel for people it's hearts of flesh that are humble enough to apologize even in situations where they are, they have not done wrong it's hearts of flesh that that really grieve for the things that grieve god's heart so god has been teaching me about forgiveness um so i want to ask you if like if you close your eyes and think of the person who has offended you hmm? maybe they don't even know that they have offended you maybe this even happened a long time ago if they walked into the room what would your reaction be hmm? some of you your hearts would rest some of you would just get up with a face of disgust and want to leave. Um, some of you will pretend to get up and say, hey, how are you? But is that genuine? Is it genuine? So I want us to really search the posture of our hearts. There's a book that I'm reading with my husband. It's called The Awe of God. Uh, and in one of the chapters, he talks about um, there, are three kinds, there are three kinds of people in one. There are three images, not even people. There are three images that we carry. We have the perceived the actual and the projected. So the perceived is what, like when people see me, what they perceive of me. Hmm? Then projected is the thing that I put out there that I want people to see. Like maybe I can lie to you that I'm a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> and you might believe it. Yet in my bank account, it's saying something else. And then there's the actual person. The one who, when you are alone, and you are in the mirror like you know your hearts you know the things that disturb you you know your flaws like you know how dark your heart is or how good your heart is so many times we we try to keep projecting the projected image or even start to live in the perceived image because like for now our content creators and people who are putting their lives out there like i am People will have a certain image of you, a perceived image of you. And the more you hear it, you might start to believe it. You might start to, to live like that and you stop to live in your actual, who you actually are. And that person is the one who, who feels the pain of heart, is the one who experiences all these things and is the one on whom scars are put. And that's the person that will stand before God. That's the person that shows up in relationships. That's the real you. So I want you to be honest with yourself. Be naked with yourself. Not physically. Well, you might, but be naked with yourself and be honest and see who is the actual person and start to deal with that person. Yeah. Um, these days, many people are going for therapy and counseling and all that, and that is well and good. But um, I was listening to a podcast by Jackie Hill Perry and her husband, Preston, and they said, Jackie said, therapy is good, but it shouldn't be the end all be all. Like once you have discovered your traumas and your experiences and how those are making you behave a certain way, are you able to take that to God so that he can now perfect that actual image because many people have have gone to therapy and are now very self-aware but now it ends up turning you back into yourself and you can easily become very self self-reliant we ought to rely on God like when you are now self-aware of how you behave how different things make you react can you turn that back to God yeah um, another thing that God has been teaching me this year is my intentionality, how I show up in the different facets of my life, in my marriage as a wife, in my family as a mother, in my work, in my work. I have one beautiful employee, um, how I show up on here as Daisy Sunshine, how I show up as a friend, how I show up as an employee at home. So they are, well, I'm, I was listening to another thing. I'm always listening to podcasts and someone's. So I was listening to one by Pastor Mildred Okonko, and she said, we have glass balls and rubber balls. Yeah. So the glass balls are the things that you cannot be replaced, like the areas in your life where you cannot be replaced. 
not easily anyway. And then the rubber balls are the things that if if we leave these balls, hmm, they will continue. Like I can come back and pick them up and they'll be okay. Like I might struggle when I pick them up. They might struggle, but I can pick them up and they'll do well. Or if I'm not there anymore for those balls, someone else can come and do that work. Yeah. So we find that um, in life, because of how busy life is or even the things that are just calling for our attention, social media, the screens and all that, you find that you are dropping the glass balls, the things that we feel, my children will always be there. They will always love me like I am their mother. But we only have one chance, one shot. We only have one chance, one shot at being intentional parents, at being intentional mothers at being an intentional father at being a present auntie yeah we only have one shot so what are your glass balls for me for example my glass balls are my marriage my children some of my friendships my family those are my glass balls like if daisy is removed from the equation it's very hard to replace daisy in those areas but now daisy as a working mother as a working woman Daisy as a soon-to-be entrepreneur. Um, if Daisy is removed from those places, someone else can take over. I can hand over my business to my sister or to someone. I can even hire someone to come and just be the face of the business and run it. A business guru can come and take over that business. But my glass balls, those I can't drop, I can't easily be replaced there and we find that we are giving a lot of attention to the rubber poles and ignoring the glass poles and once we drop the glass poles they're broken we know glass it breaks and it's hard for us to fix that up like if you miss this say the first seven years of your child's life it's hard for you to now start building a relationship with them so the intentionality on these glass balls has to start now and it's very time sensitive so that's something that god is showing me like how intentional am i in showing up for these areas in my life where i can not be easily replaced and um, last but not least here i wrote being intentional being intentional in everything if i say i'm going to show up for you i want to show up excellently if i say i'm going to work with this business i'm going to partner with this business i want to show up excellently and give you excellent work i want to think about what i'm going to deliver and give you excellent work if i say i'm going to meet my friend i want to be there and listen listen actively listen intentionally and um, attentively yeah if I'm having date night with my husband I want to be attentive and present there so that's something that God is teaching me like Daisy are you actually living your life are you or you might be like you know how in movies we have the the main character and then we have the how are they call the extras are you an extra in your own life or you are the main character are you actually being present there yeah so in this year of being unstoppable this year where my word is unstoppable, God is teaching me so much. It's it's not what I expected. When I had the word unstoppable, I thought, now nah, we're going to the UN, we're going to be on TED Talk. We're going... God was telling me, I need to deal with your heart. I need to deal with the actual image, not the projected image that you put out there for people to see or the perceived image that people think, but the actual image. Daisy. So I want you to allow God to work on the actual you, you who is watching. And I hope that by December 31st, when we are reviewing our year, we are actually better people, not projected better people, not perceived better people, but actual better people, actual better mothers, actual better friends, actual better entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. That's what God is teaching me so far. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what God is teaching you. Put it down in the comments. Or if there's something that I say that has really struck a chord with you, let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. And as always, I am rooting for you. Mwah!